I don't know, it was beyond me. I just could not get time lapse at all working on the camera two video application. So really, you can't get time lapse to work. I'm going to have to let you go. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel, and in this episode of the Android Camera 2 video application, we're going to be adding time lapse. Okay, so I'm just, what I'm going to be doing here is just um, doing a long press on the record button. If you hold your digit from a finger on the on the record button, uh, that will start time lapse instead of a normal rec record as such. And the time lapse settings I've set up, I'm making the time lapse quite quick. If that's the right terminology. I just want to track people's walkings. Just I did a recording previously of people just walking outside the cafe I was sitting in, and so I decided to use that for time lapse. But you can set whatever value you want. I will highlight in the code where we do that. Anyway, let's make a start. Okay, so first thing we need to do is to add some icons just to represent the time lapse. Okay, so let me just dig up my directory structure here. It's inside the res folder here. So we'll just right click on res here, select new, select image asset. Okay, um, first thing I'm going to do is just change the name. Naming is quite important, especially for uh, icons. So button underscore, uh, take care of the underscore, and I'm just going to call it time lapse. Now I'm going to select on image here, and I'm going to paste in. What I'm going to do is, if I go to my folder here, you can see here I've got a, a bunch of drawables here. So. I might click on the dark one here, and if I press the Alt key, if I right click first, press the Alt key, I can copy that as a path name, so select that and go back to Android Studio. Now I can just paste that into here. Okay, so that's what we're going to see. So we can select Next, and then select Finish. Okay, so we've now added our icons to our project. Next step here is to add support, status support for the time lapse. So what I want to do a search here for, let's, let me just cancel that for the moment. I want to do a search for M is recording. So basically I want to set up another flag for is time lapse. I can just copy that and paste that. And change the name to time lapse. So I've now got a time lapse flag to note whether or not we've got time lapse on or not. Now let's go to the on create method. Now it's down here. I'm gonna I've got the on click listener just for recording. I'm gonna add a on long click listener. In other words, you hold your finger on the button to enable time lapse. So we've got M record, image button. Now we can just do set on long click listener, add a new long click listener object. And just let me change that to true to note that we have consumed. Okay, now we do need to call check right storage permission. Because we're going to be calling that whether or not we're recording or doing time lapse. Now above here, this is where I'm going to enable, enable is time lapse and set that to true. Now and I also want to change the uh, icon being displayed as well. So we can just call um, record image button and set image resource. It's r dot my map and button time lapse. Okay, so that's 
that part's now been done actually getting the button icon to change when you hold your finger down on the record button okay so we need to do a bit of tidying up now that we're recording check write storage method here we need to add we need to change that let me just go into it first we need to remove these two lines and put them into the on create on click listener oh. so I can delete that and it's we've also got the same line of code there and go back to on create and it's just a matter of pasting it we'll just paste it directly above this line here okay so we've got the recording true flags now set so we don't affect our flags we can the two flags being set separately whether we're recording or on time lapse okay so the next step we can do is actually to instead of doing a setup media recorder we're going to call it setup time lapse so let's go to the setup media recorder and I'm going to be super lazy and just make a copy of this method now I can change the name of that to setup time lapse okay now I just strip out what I don't need so I need the video source but I don't need the audio source I don't need the audio output format either so I can remove those lines and I'll just keep removing these because we're going to use a profile so I've now these, these are the imperative lines that I need to retain in this method set up time lapse now I need to add a couple more lines I need to add a profile for time lapse and we can just call set profile now we've got this camcorder profile we need to call get and call camcorder profile again and that was super quick sorry but um, basically this is what you want you want quality time lapse high there's a number of settings you can choose you can choose whatever you want I'm going to use quality time lapse high okay now underneath the setup output file we're going to set our capture rate and I'm setting this to 2 which is basically capturing every half a second which is actually quite slow for time lapse but I like to capture people walking and get the context of people walking you, you might want to set this to 0.1 or 0.5 if you're watching clouds or you can set it really slow if you want to see I was going to say paint dry but yeah maybe paint dry or plants grow it's up to you but you get the idea you set the capture rate of when you want the frequency of when you want your frames to be captured so this line here is quite important I'm setting it to quite quickly I think just to capture people walking so take take note of this one okay so now we need to call our time lapse and these get called in the start record so we've got the setup media recorder now now we need to differentiate whether or not we're going to be starting a record normal recording session or time lapse so we'll use our um, uh, state flags so let's do a check for is recording so if, if that's happening or else if, if it's time lapse we will call set time lapse okay that's okay don't see any red horizontal lines that's always a good thing okay one more thing Thing we need to stop it stop time lapse and we're going to stop it exactly the same way we stop recording so let's go back into the on create okay and it's inside this method here if we're recording in the recording mode we, we stop what we're doing so we'll do the same thing here for time lapse because time lapse is just a certain type of recording basically so we'll do a check if time lapse and so if we do have time lapse on and click we shut it down and we need to reset our flag as well
as such. And that should be all the changes we need to make. Um, I will set up an example here of what of a uh, of a time lapse I made. Uh, as you can gather, if I want to do a proper time lapse, this would be quite a long tutorial, and I'm not going to bore yourself or myself by doing a time lapse recording. So I'll show a previous one that I took, but I will start up time lapse just to show you what the application does when we're doing it. So let's run this application. Okay, so application's now started up. Let me just record that. And now hold my finger on the record button. And as you can see, we've got the little time lapse icon started. And this is a matter of just pressing it again, and it stopped. And if we want to go into the ES File Explorer and if I load the bottom one split second but it did run it's proof of concept okay so that concludes enabling time-lapse in the camera to a video application wasn't too much work needed to really be done. The, I think the main details here was just setting up the setup time-lapse method, um, getting a profile and mainly just setting your capture rate really. So quality and the rate of frames you want to capture it is going to be a personal preference. Anyway, so that concludes this episode. If you want to get updated to further episodes to this series or any of the other tutorials that I'm currently working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below. And surround me all my social media accounts so you can get up to date with all the latest sort of news. I make announcements for when I upload code to GitHub, when I release an article, when I release a video, or any other sort of news relating to the channel of mobile application tutorials all gets posted on these social media accounts. So if you want to get up to date with the latest news, do um, subscribe and follow those social media accounts. And don't forget, directly above me is a link to my website as well. And that's probably the best place to watch these videos. Not only can you watch the, the video there, You've got the information of where you can get the code from GitHub, and you've also got a brief description of the code changes made in that particular tutorial as well. Anyway, that's it for this one. Bye for now.